Welcome to this QuickBooks 2020 tutorial for beginners on how to understand your profit and loss statement. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and you know as we're nearing the end of the year uh, people are looking at their profit and loss statement and their balance sheet and so I want to walk through uh, some basic principles of what you should look at when you're looking at your profit and loss statement. Okay so first of all I'm going to show you where to find this in QuickBooks. So what you're going to do you're going to go up to reports and you can go down to company and financial and go to profit and loss standard. Okay you can also go to this report center right here and once this pulls up you're going to see all these different options of different reports. These are sort of like sections and then within those sections you're going to have different reports. So within company and financial we've got profit and loss standard. All right so the the you'll see there's a bunch of them here all these different profit and loss by class by job standard detail. The most simple one you want to look at is this profit and loss standard. Okay so I'm going to click run. All right so a couple of things is uh, or are uh, you're going to see up here you can set a date range all right so if you're looking at this uh, for 2019 you're going to uh, let's say for the full year uh, you're going to say this fiscal year or this fiscal year to date uh, yours may say calendar year calendar year to date uh, it's going to be kind of the same thing depending on uh, a couple of items in your business setup but we're going to look at this uh, for the entire year. So January 1st through December 15th in this sample company file. All right. You can also just change the date range here and you can change the show column. So you can do it by month. Uh, you can do it by total. You know, so you see there, there's a bunch of different options. All right. So let me expand this out a little bit. Okay. So the, the most basic profit and loss. All right, you're going to pull this up. You're going to see all these accounts and numbers. And for a lot of people, this looks really, really confusing, right? You can go up here, you can click collapse rows, right? And it's going to condense it. It's going to make it a lot smaller. And you'll see that there are these arrows, right? So you can click on these and it'll show you the detail. When I collapse this, all it's doing is putting all of those accounts and totaling it right here. All right. So if you want to see more detail, you see, you say expand. If you want to see less, you just uh, click that and you collapse it. All right. So the basic layout of a profit and loss statement, uh, the profit and loss is going to measure a certain time period and it's going to show you how much money you made or lost during that time period. All right. So if you're, you know, following the steps and recording income and recording your expenses and your bills, et cetera, all right, this one is on an accrual basis. I'm not going to get into in this video what accrual and cash is, but on an accrual basis, you'll see here the first area, the first section is always going to be income. All right, so that's what you build your customers. That's what, you know, the work you did, whether you sold product or you had a service. This total right here is going to be, you know, how much money you brought in, let's say. Okay, so your business generated a certain amount of, of income, and that's what the income is going to be. So in this case, it's $540,221.70. And then right below this, we've got what's called cost of goods sold. All right, so this, this can be a little confusing for people to understand. Cost of goods sold is really all of the cost that goes into delivering your product or service. Direct cost, if you want to think about it that way. All right, so in this case, let me expand this and you'll see we have equipment rental, job materials, subcontractors, freight and delivery, you know, et cetera, permits and licenses. So these are all the costs directly associated with providing your service. So if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have these costs, you couldn't provide your product or service. All right, that's basically what it's saying. Because what this is going to show you is your gross profit and what that means. That's just the difference between your total um, income or revenue and your cost of goods sold, your gross profit. So what this means is that when you sell $540,000, you're bringing in $346,977 because you have a certain cost associated with delivering this product or service. All right. 
Okay, so once you figure out you've got your gross profit, below that you've generally got all your overhead type expenses. All right, these are these are costs you're still going to incur, you know, to run your business, but they are not necessarily directly associated with providing the the product or service. They're not a cost of goods sold. They're they're considered more of an overhead type expense. Okay. And in the account setup in QuickBooks, you specify if this account is cost of goods sold or if this is just an expense. So you'll see here, we've got different things like the payroll, we've got insurance, we've got office supplies, professional fees, repairs, et cetera. All right. So <clears throat> I don't want to say there's hard and fast rules of what is cost of goods sold and was, what is an expense. Um, for the most part, they're, they're you know, there can be, but you have to look at your business and really figure out, okay, what does it cost to the direct cost to provide my product or service? All right. And that's going to be your cost of goods sold. And then the other items are going to be your overhead. All right. So we've got total expense down here, which is just the total of all these overhead expenses. And then we've got our net ordinary income. And that's just the difference between this gross profit and your total expense, right? So this is saying, okay, we made 181,779 of profit in our business, all right? Now below this, we've got some other income, other expenses. These are items that aren't necessarily, you know, uh, they're, they're not standard, they're not gonna fall under one of these and they're not a cost of goods sold. You know, you, you've got some other income and then some interest income and these other expenses, okay? So, you know, you may have small balances in these, but generally these accounts are not gonna be big, all right? And then at the end down here, we've got the total net income, all right? So this is going to show you, this is just the basic layout of a profit and loss statement. If you have a service business, you may not have cost to get sold. In general, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, where like a construction business or manufacturing or retail or something like that, where you're going to have a cost to get sold. But in a service business, generally, you're not going to have a cost to get sold. All right. So these are the basics of how to read your profit and loss statement. And what you can start to do is look at this on, let's say, a monthly basis. So you can start to track and say, OK, how do we do in this month? What was our gross profit? You know, what expenses you can look at these trending and say, oh, my gosh, payroll went up uh, by four thousand in June. What was that from? Uh, and you know, fifteen thousand in December. Maybe it was bonuses in December. Maybe there were three payrolls this month. Uh, you just, this gives you an idea of what to start to look at within your profit and loss. All right. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Also head over to the QuickBooks University. Would love to have you become a member and join this growing group of awesome members that we have where you can get your questions answered when you purchase the training tutorials. The website is qbuniversity.org.